If you're looking for an over-ear headphone, I've got three great budget headphones for you to consider. And by budget, I really mean it. Only one out of these three is a hundred bucks and that's at list price because with discounts everything is just 50 to 80 bucks and stay tuned till the end because i got a bonus entry that surprised me in so many ways let's get started Slavat pagi good morning everyone kenneth here and welcome back it's great to see you again from this brand new studio that i'm building right now it's just me in this plain background but i'm really looking forward to building the space out but getting back to the topic this video will be some sort of mini review where i try to put all of the most important things you need to know so it's going to be a little bit long but i've prepared the chapters for you as always so look for them down in the description below and also of course everything said is my own honest opinion my full disclosure is down below and i really appreciate if you use my affiliate links to buy anything you need it really helps me and the channel so thank Thank you very much and let's dive into the first headphone which happens to be the cheapest and the newest in the list this is the soundpeat space i know the name is very familiar but you know what's important is the price point that could be super affordable depending on where you buy it from in my local store this sells for a mere 33 bucks which is a terrific deal but it goes up to around 50 bucks in both aliexpress and amazon with the codes in the description it's still half of our budget today and it claims to have anc transparency great sound monstrous battery life and multi-point connection what's my take first of all build quality is almost all plastic i'm pleasantly surprised they put a metal plate here in the headband which i really appreciate as it helps with the durability for years of usage down the line i know we got a nice fabric cover up top here the design is actually pretty good in line with their recent designs of the earbuds and then going down here we've got the buttons which are well spaced out easily felt by the thumb the only thing i didn't like is the location of the leds where usually it's visible between the buttons but here here, it's down here with the microphone holes, which requires you to look down like this to see if the headphones are on or off or in pairing mode. I mean, there's voice prompt telling you that pairing mode, power on, but still. Moving on, the fit of the headphone is what actually surprised me the most because there's not much space inside the ear cups. Maybe because the memory foam padding is not as thick as the others, but the drivers inside kind of touches slightly on my earlobe this is important because some may have discomfort after hours of usage but it really varies from person to person otherwise i have no complaints with the clamping force or adjusting the length of the headband everything plays nicely even if you wear glasses like me which is great let's tackle the most important factor which is the sound quality and i have to say these sound pretty good out of the box it's got punchy bass good vocals and details too but personally, I would tune it a bit more like this. Basically, I tuned the bass slightly down, clean the mids, and bring more vocal presence, which makes it great for most genres, including pop, rock, acoustic. But I can also recommend the Bass Booster EQ in the app for a bit of extra bass punch. It doesn't make this a bass monster, but it's nice to have anyway. Now, compared to the others in this video, this sound piece has a flat sound staging, so it doesn't have that much depth, but horizontally, it's up there with the best you feel the instruments are separated to the sides with a natural sounding vocal brace in the center and i'll say it now it's better than a sound core that's similarly wide but vocal sounds far and echoey we'll get into the details later furthermore volume is middle of the run here the voice prompts interrupt your music when you change between a and c modes and honestly these are the things i would nitpick on if i don't have other things to complain about but unfortunately there is, and that is the EQ that changes with ANC on, specifically. So using ANC is what I imagine people would use the most, but actually it significantly changes the treble, making it sound sibilant and piercing on the top end. This of course comes down to the songs you listen to, for example in Fearless by Taylor Swift, a relatively sibilant recording. The EQ change is very noticeable, especially when things get crowded. There's a lot of cymbal crashes and stuff, the song can be unbearable to listen to, but if you listen to No Excuses by Megan Trainor for example, or other pop songs, EDM songs, it's not too noticeable. Now completely turning 
turning down the high frequencies on the Soundpiece app helps a tiny bit, but it doesn't completely eliminate the issue. And to be honest, this could be a deal breaker if not for the extra low price point. So I'm taking that into strong consideration when buying the Soundpiece space. As far as ANC goes, it's nothing super, just helps reduce the surrounding mid to low frequency noise. And the treble side is not reduced much, so you can still hear things like cooker hood fan, airplane noise. These stuff won't be as silent as the other headphones, but probably I'm asking too much for 30 bucks. For 50, yeah, I might be picking on it though. Fortunately, transparency mode works, though it boosts the higher frequency quite a lot. So fan noise, for example, sounds louder than it actually is. So my point is I would only recommend using any of these features only when absolutely necessary. In defense for using the headphone with ANC off, this is actually a battery beast. What's written on the box is like someone just hit the keyboard and fill it with numbers. Hear this, the thing can last 123 hours in one go. Use it for seven hours a day, two weeks straight, the thing still have some juice left. Totally crazy if you're wondering, this doesn't feel heavy at all. It's just 260 grams, which is around the ballpark of headphones in general, including the Sony XM5. But then what happens if you activate ANC or transparency mode? Well, the number literally splits in half to around 60 hours of playtime, and this is still a full week of usage and mostly above average. But with all the headaches and catches I told you before, I would recommend the Soundbeat Space just as a wireless headphones that plays great music, just so happens to have ANC and transparency. Finally, connectivity wise, this supports gaming mode by triple pressing the play pause button, but what's more important is multi point connection, which works flawlessly. There's no fancy codecs to offer here, but it really doesn't matter much in my opinion, as long as the connection is solid, the sound is great, which is the case during testing. And we're going to test the mic right now, but I wanted to let you know that Soundcore actually has a competitor called the Q20i. So let me know if you want to see me compare it down in the comments below. I'll see if I can do it in the near future. Okay, so this is how the Soundpiece Space microphone works. I'm currently there's outdoor units of air conditioning working right now. And what do you think of the sound quality? Does it cancel that low noise rumble hum? Like, woo, 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 woo. does it catch my voice clearly? Let me know. And that's pretty much it. Okay, if you found the video helpful so far, feel free to hit the like and subscribe. We just hit 100K. And I'm still finding a way to hang my silver play button somewhere here, but we're already on our next quest to the next milestone. And I would love to have you in the journey. But enough rambling now, let's move on to the next option in the list. And here we have the Edifier W820NB+. What a name. First things first though, what I actually have here is the older non-plus version of the WA20NB. The plus version improves upon the ANC, transparency, and connectivity, so basically the chipset itself, where it has now app support, multi-point connection, and LTAC. But largely the build and sound quality stays the same, so I can give you some idea of how it's gonna be. I gotta say it straight, this is still an amazing sounding headphone. So what we have here is a balanced tuning that delivers a good amount of bass with natural vocals that's very clear and defined. The treble never came out harsh as well. And then the sound stage, it has depth to it. Like you feel the vocals are a little bit to the front while the instruments are to the side and back. It makes this listening experience much more immersive despite not being the widest horizontally. So this is an all around good sound that plays any genre well except if you want more bass by any means it's not lacking but if you want super thumpy soppies rumble you might want to stay until we talk about the next pair of cans do note however the plus version has four eq presets you can play around with no custom eqs but it should help a little bit nonetheless now how about the build quality well actually this is worse than a soundpiece space there's no metal scene at all here and the headband is made of completely plastic it's not foldable at all too so you better hang it around your neck when you're going around and there's no carry case or pouch included in the box and sure you don't get one with the soundpiece either but at least this thing can be folded so when you do get a pouch this doesn't take as much space in your bag but as far as the fit goes i prefer the edifier than soundpiece 
as it has thicker memory foam padding on the ear cups. And although like the Soundpeats, the ear cup are not that big, they still fit my ear just enough. Generally, this feels more comfortable during long listening sessions. And quickly touching ANC, this already blocks noise quite well. The overall noise reduction is significantly stronger than the Soundpeats, and the Plus version is going to be slightly better too. So if I'm getting a headphone because I want the ANC, I would start right here. And yes, the sound quality doesn't change with ANC modes too, which is just great. Now, I have a few problems here, but starting with the biggest one first, the lack of ventilation in the ear cups mean that if you accidentally press on the headphones like this, the sound will destroy like the air is pushing on the drivers, preventing them to make sound. And this does not happen with the other headphones on the list. And I'm concerned that this may damage the drivers over time. But to be honest, it really rarely happens. And maybe it's fixed in a plus version already. Another one that I see as a potential deal breaker is the Edifier does not have three and a half millimeter headphone jack. Having said that though, you can do USB-C to USB-C audio in the plus version, which is still non-standard, but it's better than nothing. But as a wireless headphone, Phone. It's got multi-point connection, LDAC covered, just like I said. Just don't be surprised for the lack of AAC here because it's Edifier and their earbuds are the same. Fortunately, they still sound good anyway. Now, some other nitpicks I have is the constantly flashing blue LED light if you're not playing any music. And then the volume level here, it's the lowest of the bunch, about three clicks below Soundcore and two clicks below Soundpeats. Of course, enough for daily use, but you'll be seeing 70-80% pretty often. And if you want crazy loud headphones, then these are definitely not it. Finally, the battery life of these are at 50 hours without ANC and 30 hours with ANC on. I would still say it's a week of light-ish usage, but it is on the lower side for sure, and it's where it shows its age the most. Still though, if you ask me, old headphones like these tend to get a deep discount on sale. So make sure you check the affiliate link below for the most updated prices and let me know what kind of deal you got. Okay, so now we are with the Edifier W820NB. What do you think of the sound quality? Remember, the Plus version has a chip upgrade, so it probably performs better. Can you hear that rumbly AC outdoor noise? Like, And that's going to be it for the microphone test. Let's move on to the next one. Moving on to our next entry, which is probably my favorite yet, and I'm not sponsored for saying this, all right? This is the Soundcore Space One which maxes out our budget today at 100 bucks. On sale, this actually could get down to 70 bucks if I remember correctly. And do keep an eye for its older version too, the Life Q30, which is still a great pair. You can find my review here. Basically, this is the most comfortable headphone for me. The ear cups are huge. They've got plush paddings all around and it gets the least warm after hours of usage. It also has the best built quality that looks and feels great. The attention to detail, like how this can be fold flat with your chest when you hang it around your neck, is flagship worthy. Although it still has to cut cost on the materials, like the buttons still wobble, but it has the least amount of wobble compared to others at this price. So you know, you get what you're paying for and this is great. One thing I have to commend Soundcore though is how the Space One is packed with features like adaptive ANC, AI powered microphones, multi point connection, LDAC, customizable sound and controls, even wear detection sensor inside here. And my favorite of all is the tap for transparency mode on the left ear cup. So you use it like this automatic transparency mode, or also in the app, you can set it to detect when you start talking and automatically activate transparency mode. It's quite crazy. You get all this for just a hundred bucks. Now, of course, there's going to be something not very good about this headphone, right? Well, in a way, the sound quality is the only thing that is not super special. Beaten by the others? We'll see about that. So if I have to say, this still sounds all right. Basically, my only gripe is the vocal presentation where the singer is always sound far, like placed too high up front. Kind of like you apply a virtual surround effect in a way. The center feels very empty despite having an excellently wide and spacious soundstage. Of course, this depends on the song. You felt it more in Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen than in Growing Up by Macklemore. And it doesn't help that the custom EQs in a Soundcore app cannot change the sound significantly, which is a problem with Soundcore stuff in general. Still though, my EQ here tries to bring that vocal a bit more focus. I know it's not a night and day difference, but you can try anyway. Hands down, the best genre to listen to with the Space One has always been pop, dance, and 
all the subgenres that stem from them. Songs with strong beats are very fun to listen to. And should you need even more bass, you can double tap the ANC button to turn on the bass up feature. It's a quick and easy way to boost the mid bass to make EDM songs like Wish You Well by Sigala really stand out. I'm talking about club style bass power and rumble that you just don't get with the other two headphones we've gone through before. Now touching on the ANC feature, firstly, there's no EQ changes to any ANC modes when you use them. But second and more importantly, the adaptive ANC sweeps the floor as being one of the best for the price. Remember for the price because they are still not Bose or Sony level. Even Soundcore's old Q45 is still significantly quieter, but it's quite the noise reduction that doesn't make you feel like you're underwater. And the adaptive nature means it takes a few seconds at first to analyze the noise and then kicks in. It's pretty cool to hear in action. Okay, we're gonna see the mic test very soon, but connectivity wise, this is flawless as usual. Then battery life is slightly better than edifier at 55 hours without ANC and 40 hours with ANC on. Nothing at the sound peaks level yet, but still a very solid number that should be enough to last a whole week of usage. Overall, this is the way to go if you care about the look built quality and overall features. And finally, we get a carrying pouch, although I would love to see a hard case instead for better protection, which we actually do get with the Life Q30 before. Okay, so here we are now with the Soundcore Space One, and this is the AC unit I'm talking about. And yeah, it's making a little bit of a humming sound, not a little bit, a pretty loud humming sound. See if you can hear that. So basically I'm re-recording this because previously I realized that wasn't using the latest firmware and now we are at the latest firmware so february 2024 and this is how it sounds like okay let's get back to the video now bonus recommendation thank you so much if you reached this far let's talk about this wired headphone i know but this moondrop joker I've been using it to edit all my videos for months at this point. And look at this, this may look like something the construction workers use, but the sound quality, the comfort, the durability it offers, it's second to none. And especially when you consider the price, which is just 80 bucks. So basically, this is a reference headphone, which means it aims to give the most accurate representation of your media. Or in other words, this has a very flat tuning that, to be honest, is not very exciting, especially in the bass region. As you can see from the Moondrop own test, it rolls off in the sub bass below 80 hertz. But then, if we talk about pure sound quality, this really is in another league even compared to flagship wireless headphones. For example, the experience of listening to What's Going On by Marvin Gaye in stereo reminds me of the Dolby Atmos mix that I listened to a lot with the AirPods Pro 2 to review it. The soundstage is so very impressively spacious. The instruments are distinct, spanning across left to right, front and back. You can even hear the crowd chatters like he's playing in a busy bar. And this is the main point of a reference monitor, right? You need to know exactly what is playing where. So there's this immense amount of detail with any song you play, from every percussion hit to the exact notes played by the guitar and bass, they are beautifully mixed together with the vocals that never gets drowned out by any of these. Even when editing my own videos, this headphone really makes sure I notice every little flaw I made. Now to complete the professional theme, this is also built like a tank. Metal is used for important structures like the headband, and the ear cups and notice the foam padding on the headband that's split in the center here that's so when you hang it on a hook or your monitor it doesn't deform the foam over time and the paddings on the ear cups despite not being a memory foam are super thick very comfortable and breathable too it literally has holes inside and outside so it's never hot even when you use it for the whole Day long and I've really tried that and of course this thing is detachable too so replacing it only takes a few seconds and lastly how I love this cable again detachable it's very solid braided build behaves very well right out of the box and also you get an adapter from three and a half millimeter to quarter inch jack which is 
the bigger ones for audio mixers, musical instruments, and things like that. This is really ready for work. Now for the potential downsides you need to know, it's not necessarily about the headphone themselves. The Joker really surprised me, and I think Punch is way above the asking price, but because it is purpose-built for professional use, the humongous size that's not foldable at all is very clunky to carry around. Even when you hang it in your neck, it's huge. And because the ear cups are breathable, they don't actually seal that much noise. So in a way, it's great for home or studio use because you can talk to other people without taking the headphones off. But take it out for a commute and you may have difficulty listening to your music. And yes, the little bass doesn't help too. But to be honest, you can EQ this one with your music player and it actually does pump out bass if you want to. So do I recommend the Moondrop Joker? <laughs> Absolutely, freaking lutely I really want you to have a listen and it's definitely one of the best headphones under 100 bucks. But is it for everyone? That much I can say no. The other three options are better for daily use. They are more practical and a lot of the time, convenience is what matters. So there you have it. Let me know which one is your pick. For Moondrop Joker, actually, I am thinking of a comparison with the Fio JT1, which is also a very interesting looking headphone. Comment down below if you want to see them. And for now, I recommend you check out these videos for earbuds recommendations in different budgets. And thank you so much for watching. I really hope this video helped. I'm Kenneth. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.